We're just getting ready to work on number 10. We had verified that they were all cubes, cube of 1, cube of 2, cube of x, cube of 4, and it doesn't matter whether it's plus or minus. With cubes, remember with squares it can only be minus. With cubes it can be either one. So we start out with setting our signs in SOAP. So same as the original problem, opposite of the original problem, always positive. Next, we do cube roots. So cube root of 1 is 1, cube root of 8 is 2, cube root of x cubed, x. Cube root of 64, 4 times 4 times 4, so it's 4. Then you put your little guidelines here on the side. Square, multiply, square. I usually just write SMS, but I'm just writing it out now just so we have um, a little better guideline. So square means take the first term and multiply it by itself. So 1 half times 1 half. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. So that would be 1 fourth. Don't write 1. 1 half plus 1 half is 1. 1 half times 1 half is 1 times 1. 1, 2 times 2, 4, x to the second. Multiplies means take the first term and multiply it by the second. 1 half x times 4. Well, half of 4 is 2 and then x. Of course, you can do any of these you want in the calculator, but you should be able to do these simple ones in your head, I think. But you, obviously, you can't put the x in, but you can go 1 half times 1 half, 1 half times 4. And square means square the last term. Last term's 4, so 4 times 4, 16. And the beauty of this, as long as you've taken the GCF out, this will never be able to be factored again. So that's nice. So I don't have to check it. I can just stop. Okay, so now you have 3 under your belt, the example problem, and these two. So now it's your turn to try one. So go ahead and try number nine. The one on the test is most like 12, so I'm going to highlight it. But number nine is great to practice on. So go ahead and practice on nine. Shut off the video and then come back and check it. Okay, so we need to verify that they're cubes. 2 times 2 times 2, x times x times x, 3 times 3 times 3, y times y times y, and it doesn't matter whether it's plus or minus, so we have cubes here. And then we do soap for our signs. Same, opposite, always positive. And we look at the original problem sign. So everybody good so far? Then we take cube roots. So cube root, cube root, so 2x, because 2x times 2x times 2x is 8x cubed, and 3y, because 3y times 3y times 3y is 27y cubed. <clears throat> then we do our square, multiply square. So square means square the first, so this would be 2x times 2x. This would be multiply 2x times 3y, and this would be square, 3y times 3y. So you kind of go down the line, square the first, multiply the two, square the last. And that's how you fill in your second parenthesis. So 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2 times 3 is 6xy. 3 times 3, 9y squared. And there's your answer. So oftentimes I get questions, how do you check this? Well, there's a long check and there's a short check. The short check's not perfect, but it's probably good enough for a test. So multiply these two, 8x to the third, and it should give you that. Multiply these two, positive 27y cubed, and it should give you that. So it will check everything but this term. 
and do the same thing up here. 125 x to the third, yep, and negative 1, yep. So that doesn't check the middle term, but it checks everything else. So for me, that's good enough for a test unless I had a lot of time. If I had a lot of time, then I'd go this times this, 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 this times this. And if you look back at your 4.2 notes, you'll see we did multiplication and we multiplied two by threes. So that would be the long check. Okay, let's go ahead and do these last two together. <coughs> so on 11, first we need to verify its cubes. Is that divisible by 3? Yes. Is that a cube? Yes. 2 times 2 times 2. Is that divisible by 3? Yes. So that tells us it is a sum or difference of cubes. In this case, difference of cubes. So I put my signs in using soap. Same. Opposite. Always positive. And I forgot to check. Is there anything common? Nope. Because we're supposed to check that first. So now we need to do cube roots. So 9 divided by 3 would be x to the third. Cube root of 8 is 2. 15 divided by 3 is y to the fifth. So that's the most important part of the whole problem besides setting the signs up. Because you miss this, then that makes you miss all this. So you divide your exponents, 9 divided by 3, 15 divided by 3, you take the cube root of 8, and it's 2 because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Then write your little square, multiply square at the top. And you square the first term, so x3 times x3. Multiply the two terms, ignoring the signs because the signs are set. So x3 times 2y to the fifth. Square the last term, 2y to the fifth times 2y to the fifth. And like I said, you ignore the signs because the signs are already set. So we don't even pay attention to the signs. So we set them on the first step and they never change. So square the first term. Multiply these two square the last term. So let's see what we get in multiplication. We add exponents, so x to the sixth, 2x3, y5, so 2x to the third, y to the fifth, and this will be 2 times 2, 4. Add exponents in multiplication, so y to the tenth. So not really any harder than our other ones, but a little bit more exponent-y. That's a word. But 12 Definitely is harder. And like I said, I did put it on the test. So you do have to know how to do this quote unquote hard one. I mean, it's not really that hard, but it's a step more than the others. Does anybody see why it's a step more? What are we supposed to look for first? GCF. And that's probably the biggest thing. Do you know how many students write prime on this? Because they go, well, 16 is not a cube. You're right, it's not. But it's not prime either. Two's common. So first, you always take out a GCF if something's common. So we divide both of those by 2. And then we get t cubed plus 8. And now, all of a sudden, whoa, look at that. It is a cube now. t times t times t, 2 times 2 times 2. So this has to carry with the problem, but it doesn't affect anything from here on out. So you set up your soap, your little parenthesis, big parenthesis, your soap sign, so same, opposite, always positive. Then we do the cube roots. Cube root of t cubed is t. Cube root of 8 is 2. And then we square, multiply, square. So that means we do t times t for the square, 2 times t for the multiply, and 2 times 2 for square of the last. So square, multiply, square. So you just kind of move left to right on that. So that's going to be t squared, 2t, and ignore the signs because they're set ahead of time, so they have nothing to do with this. They're already set. You just do the square multiply square and write the number you get. 
So that one is on the test. And like I said, so many students were going to take the 2 out. <clears throat> so they either try to do cubes with the 2 and 16 in, which is impossible, or they write prime. So very good one to be sure and go back and look at before you take your test. Okay, the next page are the advanced problems. And, you know, we're just learning, and I don't really like to get into the advanced stuff. That's kind of reserved for the next class. So there's three problems. We'll do one of the three. Just so you've seen one, it doesn't look totally unfamiliar, but my focus is just getting you to know the eight factoring patterns. I'm really not concerned about getting into the big tough stuff, but it's on here, so we'll do one of the three. We won't ignore the whole page. So what we have on this page is problems that are squares and cubes. To be a square, the exponent has to be divisible by 2. They are. To be a cube, the exponent has to be divisible by 3. Ooh, they are. And numbers like 64, it's a square of 8, but it's the cube of 64. So 64 is one of those that's both a square and a cube as well. So they're both squares and cubes. So let's write that down here. We're just going to get the basics. And we could do either squares or cubes, but it's recommended that you factor it squares first because it breaks it down more. So when you have a choice of picking squares or cubes, we go with the lower degree. So anytime you have a choice, pick the lowest degree. So I picked 14 to do. And if you want to practice on any and send them to me and ask me to check them, that's fine. But like I said, my focus is just getting you to know the eight basics. You know, I'm not going to go into the fancy stuff. But does everybody agree this is a square and a cube? Two goes into it, three goes into it, and one is one times one, but it's also one times one times one. So as the directions say above, we start with the smallest degree. So since it's a square and a cube, we start with squares. So this would be the square factoring difference of squares. And then if it can factor again, then we can go from there. So we learned on the first page of this packet, squares can only be subtraction. It is subtraction. And the only way to get that minus sign is for the signs to be different. So 1 plus 1 minus. And because we're doing a difference of squares, we're going to do square root, square root. So there's a 2 there. So 6 divided two by 2 makes that x cubed. The square root of 1 is 1. And then the second parenthesis for squares is exactly the same, but with a different sign. So now what you should notice is, whoa, two cubes, sum of cubes, difference of cubes. So this answer is going to have four parentheses. So we do little parenthesis, big parenthesis, little parenthesis, big parenthesis. So we have two cubes, two soap problems to do in a row. So same as the original problem, opposite, always positive. Same as the original problem, opposite, always positive. And the numbers are going to be the same. All that will change are the signs. So we do cube roots. So the cube root of x cubed is x. So I put it in both the first slots. Cube root of 1 is 1. So I put it in both the second slots. And then remember, we just do square multiply square. So x times x, 1 times x, 1 times 1. And same thing here. x times x, 1 times x, 1 times 1. We don't worry about signs. The signs are set. So x times x is x squared. 1x is just x. 1 times 1 is 1. x squared, x, 1. Done. So even though that was a hard one, quote unquote, it wasn't really that bad. But you have to know to start with